I'm Donnie Norman. Welcome again to The Word is Light, Word Vibes. In this series, we are looking at the body of Christ. From our study guide written by Apostle Dr. Mary Banks. This is an exciting study. So far, we have looked at chapter 5, many members, one body. And we are in part 2 of chapter 3. The New and Living Way, an exciting study. And if you want to get the study guide to follow along with me, you can go to marybanksfaithlibrary.com. But I challenge you, don't go anywhere. Sit back, relax, get your Bibles and your notebooks, and listen to what it is that God would have to say to you today. If you are watching this broadcast, He has designed something for you to hear to uplift your spirit. And so, let's go in the word today. But before, also, if you have comments or questions, remember you can email me at thewordislight.wordvibes at btbn.tv. So we are looking at this exciting new and living way. And in the previous edition, I spoke to the fact that it is sad that almost 2,000 years after Jesus' death, he died to secure a new covenant, a better covenant for us. We are told that the first covenant was faulty, and this one is faultless. It is the perfect covenant, the new one that he established in his own blood. Yet, most of his children are living under an old covenant. That is done away with. And so I'm challenging you as we go through the new and living way. Because the dispensation of grace. And I don't have the time to teach dispensationalism. Um, but the dispensation of grace, the seventh dispensation, ushered in a new and living way. And so we don't have to look back and say, okay, I, I should have been living in Noah's time or... I should have been living in Abraham's time or David's time. Those men, they ran well in their time. Noah, in his time, in spite of all the wickedness that was happening on planet Earth, the scripture says he found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And by faith, he saved his household. Right? And so they did. They ran well. They finished their testimony well in their time. This is our day. If you, are, if you are watching, you and I are alive at the same time in history. It means that there's something in the body of Christ that we are compacted with to supply each other. And as we do our part, we will see a mature expression of Jesus Christ arising in this hour. And that is why he is restoring his latter-day apostles and prophets to Unveil the mysteries of Christ through the fivefold ministry so that we can see a mature expression of the body of Jesus Christ with every member working in a measure, their measure. And we will see the body of Christ edifying itself in love. What an awesome time. The, the reality is, as Dr. Banks said at the beginning of this chapter, the new and living way is really the essence of the gospel. It is the way that God established for us. Now, let's go to this study guide, right? Page 19. Now, Paul declares that we have been given access to God by a new and living way. He said this contrast in the method of salvation with the sacrifices of bulls and rams and goats. The animals were slain and their blood covered sin. But it didn't remove sin. They died on the altar. The animals died on the altar. Their blood was sprinkled on the people. And their remains were discarded. But guess what? This is not so with Jesus. He was the Lamb of God. I mean, every time I think about John the Baptist on that day by River Jordan, I just get so excited. It's an ordinary day. Everybody is going about their own business. And they're hearing, they're hearing that um, baptism is going on down by River Jordan. And John is there baptizing. And he looks up and he sees Jesus Christ. And he says, prophetically speaking, right? Because those persons who were there couldn't even understand what was happening. But he was fulfilling that which was written. 
right? Behold the Lamb of God which takes away the sins of the world, right? And so, not so with Jesus. He was the Lamb of God. He rose from the dead and created for us a new and living way to God. It is the method by which this was accomplished. That was the question here. And this is what this particular lesson seeks to look in. My meaning is that the end result of our redemption is the great mystery that was hidden in the Father. Right? The mysteries of Christ were locked up in God until the particular time. And this is the time that he has chosen because even though uh, the early apostles, like uh, uh, Apostle Peter and James they, and, and um, Paul in particular, unraveled a lot of the mysteries, but for some reason, God has chosen this time because he has found hearts because of his timing. Right? He has found hearts that are ready to unlock them and, and unveil them, his holy apostles and prophets. And you may be watching and you are saying, I don't believe in present day apostles and prophets. I can tell you by experience, there are present day apostles and prophets in the body of Christ today. And that is why truth is coming with a frequency and with a clarity. That is, we are seeing, we are seeing all some things happening in the body of Christ. And a lot of that is locked up in this message I'm bringing today about the new and living way. Jesus consecrated or made new our fellowship with the Father. Right? He consecrated for us through the veil. That is to say, his flesh. A new way to get to him. In other words, you cannot come to Jesus Christ by the blood of rams anymore. It's by, the, the, it's by a new and living way which he consecrated through his flesh. But we're going to look exactly at what, what are the implications of this. Jesus reconciled us to the Father by making us bones of his bones and flesh of his flesh. I tell you when our eyes begin to open and we begin to see what salvation is, it is a really, if, if, if many, many persons are struggling in the body of Christ today to live holy, it's because the knowledge of God is, 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 is lacking, right? And because we are living under an old covenant, but the new covenant reality is able to build you up and to, and to give you an inheritance among the sanctified, to cause you to comprehend exactly what happened at salvation, right? Through faith in Jesus Christ and the indwelling of the Holy Ghost, we are literally now the body of Christ, right? And, 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 and let me back up here. We are the body of Christ because at salvation, Jesus literally, our bodies were literally crucified. We died. As fast as you bat your eye, we died. Right? And he, he just took our souls from the flesh, put it in the spirit, and so... We are not in the flesh anymore. Salvation is a positional shift. You are in the spirit of God and your soul is hid with Christ in God. And that body of yours, he, as fast as you blink your eyes, because your body had to die because the spirit without the body, the body without the spirit is dead, so you died. And so that body, he got into it. He paid for it. And there are scriptures coming to my spirit Knowing not that you are the temple of a living God, if any man defile the temple of God, you are bought with a price, he has paid for you. And so your body is now the literal body of Jesus Christ. You are bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. When Jesus walked among men, he walked as the son of a living God. God was in him, as I said in the previous session, that the dispensation has changed. When Jesus walked up and down the earth. He was Emmanuel, God with us. But now the dispensation has changed. He's not, no longer just God with us. He's Christ in us, the hope of glory. And so because he is in us, he is now living in our flesh. And that is the new and living way. Through Christ Jesus, the Father is able to live in the church. It is now his holy habitation. It is crucial here that we see the mind of the Father, right? He wanted sons. He always wanted sons. Romans 8 verse 29, For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed into the image of his Son, 
that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Jesus is the firstborn. But God didn't stop there. He always wanted children. And so now we don't have Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We are, we are now in him. And it's, it's, it, we are now the sons of God. Right? Literal sons of God. We have his nature. We have his seed. We have been regenerated. We have his genes. We have his life. He now makes us not only partakers of his divine nature, but he makes us joint heirs with Jesus. What a reality. This is the new and living way. The reason we were conceived in the manner in which we were is so that Jesus could be the first of many. God always intended to have children. And I know the question popped up in my, in my, my mind, many, what, if G, what if Adam had not seen? He would have fulfilled what was in his intent. He always wanted children, right? Biological children. Children who have carry his Zoe life. He's the God kind of life, right? If we were conceived in any other fashion, then he, then he would not be a firstborn. But in order to be such, there must be others likened to him. There are other children likened to Jesus. Now are we the sons of God. And I'm talking sons. If you're there and you're a woman, don't get don't 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 feel inferior. This covenant has come, and in Christ there's no male, no female, no bond, no free, no Jew, no Gentile. All of us are now sons of the living God. With equal rights and privileges. Where Jesus says, as I am in the earth, so are you. And all of this may sound out there. And we're going to look at how, how practical this is. It is, trust me, it is practical. Because once our minds get a hold of the fact that Jesus is now living in our flesh. And all our souls need to do is cooperate with him. And his divine life with us wants to express itself every day. We are going to see him doing some awesome things. I don't want you to go away. Get, just settle down. Allow the Holy Spirit to speak to your heart. We're going for a short break. But we'll be back because we're looking at the new... Welcome back. We're talking about the new and living way from the study guide, The Body of Christ by Apostle Dr. Mary Banks. As I said before, if you need a copy of this book to follow along, marybanksfaithlibrary.com. Yes, just before the break, we were looking at the fact that God has always wanted sons. And Jesus Christ was his first begotten son. But I have news for you. He has other begotten children. If you have the Holy Spirit, you are born again, not of the will of flesh, right? Not of the will of man, but you are born again of the Holy Spirit. And so you are literally a, a son of God. This is the new and living way that was established, where God would now have children who would be spiritual children the essence their essence would be spiritual they would be living in a human body but not because you see a human body means that you are entertaining a natural being first corinthians 15 verse 45 speaks of two adams right the first man adam was earthy of the earth he was he was earthy the second one is the Lord from heaven. He is spiritual. One is natural, the other is spiritual. Jesus is the second or the, the last Adam. 
And in that scripture we see where as we have borne the image of the first, all of us who are alive bore the image of the first. We're all born as humans, right? But the second man, Adam, the second Adam, the last Adam, he is a quickening spirit. Jesus is a heavenly quickening spirit. And as we bore the image of Adam, we now bear the image of Jesus Christ, the last Adam. The last Adam. That's exciting. If we were mere human beings after salvation, then what would constitute him being a firstborn? It is ludicrous to think that his brothers were any different from him. God did not beget two types of children. So if you are born again, you are born of his bones and flesh of his flesh. He lives in you. He has paid for your flesh. He now lives in your temple. And he says, how dare you defile my temple? If you defile my temple, I'll destroy you. Don't take my body and give it to a harlot. Your body is the literal body of Christ. And so we want to look into these truths. And we want the Holy Spirit to massage our spirit. And we want to meditate on them until the, 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 a spirit of enlightenment comes. And, and just in case you are watching, let me just say if your heart is pure towards God, you'll begin to see him in his word. He says, if you are in heart, we'll see God in his word. And I'm, I'm sensing someone who is watching and your, your spiritual ears just popped. Because God has opened the eyes of your understanding and you are now seeing that. Guess what? I'm not just a natural um, human being anymore. I am born again. I have the spirit of God. I am a son of God. I'm, and you see, the fact is that we sing these songs, right? I know who I am. But, but guess what? The word of God is going to bring such a, a, a shift in our spirit that we're really going to walk in an experiential knowledge of the word of God inside of a new and living way. In redemption, the old man is dead. All things are new and all things pertain to God. It's no wonder the scripture says all things are of God. If you are born again, all things are of God. Your body is new because at salvation you got a brand new body. He stepped in, cleansed that thing, right? And raised you up, raised you up, um, killed that old flesh in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a minute, circumcised it. We will look at that a little later. And guess what? You, you are a brand new creation in Christ, right? Paul makes this very clear in his letter to the Corinthians. Therefore, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 to 20. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away and behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God. Your body, your soul, your spirit is of God. Who has reconciled us unto himself by Jesus Christ. And has given us a ministry of reconciliation. All of us are in ministry. All of us have been given this ministry of reconciliation. That's for another time. But if you're wondering what does reconciliation mean. It means to make acceptable. To cause to coexist in harmony. And make us compatible. God made us compatible with Jesus. As a joint here with him. Can you imagine joined here with the prince of life? The Son of God, the Word made flesh. Let me tell you, this new and living way that He has consecrated for us is the mystery of all ages. And God wants our understanding unlocked so that we can begin to see and know the hope of our calling. And it doesn't matter where you are. Maybe you are watching and you're, you're just not saved and you're saying, what is this lady talking about? A new and living way? Yes. There's a new and living way of life that God has ordained for you to come into. Where you can know. Can you imagine knowing God? Hearing his voice talking to you momentarily. Having him lead you. Because the new and living way is about God living in you. And he prophesied. He said, I'm going to walk in them and I'm going to talk in them. And you're going to hear a voice say, this is the way. Walk in it. And this is what I have been experiencing. 
Well, I got saved from as a child in my early teens. But my walk in the Lord has intensified every year. Every year he has been faithful to send the knowledge of God, to increase me in the knowledge of God. And, and truths like, like this from the body of Christ, this, this study guide, just, just does something to me, just quickens my spirit and causes me to hear God so clearly. And you can know his will. God, God is not just a father up there, a creator up there. He can actually become your father. You become his biological child. He lives in you. It's a divine reality where you know him and he lives in you and he speaks to you. And he shows you what it is, the, the purpose for which you were born. The Holy Ghost is the spirit of, the Holy Ghost is the spirit of the Father. The God that was in Jesus doing the work of reconciliation. Jesus testified of the Father's presence in him, working through him. It was the Father who needed man to die for man. It had to be, Jesus had to become a man to die for us. It was the Father who declared that man's sacrifice must be holy. It was the Father who decided only a son of his making would be able to fulfill the law of redemption. It was also the Father who determined death on the cross, right, was to be the way of salvation for mankind. The old man was crucified with Christ. Therefore, that son would be made compatible to him. And proven to coexist with him without controversy. You see, God is, God is, is prudent. And, and the way he has made us as sons, principalities and powers have nothing on us. Because Jesus has consecrated a way through his flesh. These flesh that he has brought for him, for himself. So that mankind can see. God now walking up and down. Walking up and down. Because for some of us, he's living in us. But for some of us who are not yet saved, if you're not saved, you're the devil's child and he lives in you. And he's your father. The scripture says you're of your father, the devil, and his loss you will do. Sometimes you want to do right, but you find that you're doing evil. It's because of that loss that is in you. You're doing the will of your father. But I want to tell you that God is faithful. He is walking up and down every day around you and he's, he's living, he's living in, he, he is living in, in his children. And one of these days, your eyes are going to come open to see that mother there, your mother, your father, your grandma. They are, they have him inside of, of them. And you are going to connect to, to Christ in them as that new and living way and find him. Therefore, God is prudent. He, was, he, he baptized Jesus in his death. Jesus fulfilled those requirements, being the true offspring of the Father. He was the begotten of the Father of God. His soul and the Holy Ghost were joined together as one. And as he did with Christ, so he did with us. We are now one with God. That's the essence of the new and living way. And I just feel very excited today about this message because, guess what? It is saying that Christians are the true, literal sons of God. No, are we the sons of God. He lives inside of us. Join me in this prayer. Father, we just thank you today for the reality of the new and living way. That you now live in our flesh. And through these flesh that you have paid for, we People can experience the way, the truth, the life. You can connect with them because you're now walking up and down. Men, you're walking and you're talking in us. We thank you for this divine reality. We pray that the eyes of the understanding of those who are watching will be enlightened, that they may know the hope of their calling. And they will know that coming to the fullness of their inheritance that they have in the saints. It doesn't matter what you're going through today. As you watch, I pray that you are edified. I'm, I'm encouraging you, get the study guide, marybanksfaithlibrary.com. And if you have questions or comments, feel free to email me at thewordislight.wordvibes at btbn.tv. 
I love you. I love you so much. And I want to thank you for watching. And know that this new living way that God has consecrated, that's the in thing. That's the, that's the message of the ages. That's the newest technology and the best technology that, technology that will ever be created. God in flesh. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Thank you for watching. See you next time on Word Vibes. I love you.